Hi, now I'm going to talk about FMEA, Failure Modes and Effects Analysis. Very, very effective tool if you want to design something or if you are doing something for the first time and you don't want to fail in execution or when you are in the improved phase of uh, DMAC, Lean and Six Sigma project implementation. So whenever you are doing something for the first time and you don't want to fail, you can use FMEA. So let us see what is an FMEA. FMEA was used by NASA for the first time. And since then, it has been used in automobile industries, healthcare, and lots of uh, manufacturing as well as uh, financial domains. Uh, typically, it is used in three situations, product or service design, process execution, or analysis of potential human errors. So we will do an FMEA together. But before that, let us see what are the components of FMEA. If you look at the first column, the first column says process, the process step or the input. So you have to write the process or the input or the process step here in the first column. And then second column, you have to write the failure mode. What can go wrong with this input or the step or the process? And then you have to mention potential failure effect. Uh, what is the effect on the outputs of that failure mode? Then you have to rate then you have to give a severity rating, one to 10. 10. 10 means the most severe, 10 means the worst case, one means the best case. So how bad it is? 10 means very bad for the customer or for the organization. One means it has no impact on the customer. Then you have to write the potential causes and then respective occurrences. If it occurs most of the time, the rating will be 10. And if never occurs, the rating will be one. And in current controls, you have to mention the current controls. What are the controls which are existing in the organization, which will either prevent the failures, or at least you'll be able to control the causes or detect the occurrence of that defect or error. So, so let us do an FME on a, some day-to-day -day life problem. Typically, uh, this is how uh, FME sheet looks like. And uh, you can download this sheet from Google. And, you know, easily uh, these sheets are available on, on the internet. So you have to write the process or the product name. So I'm taking a day to day life example and I'm going to do an FMEA on uh, how to uh, prevent the failure uh, of uh, coming late to office. Okay. So the process or the process steps I'm talking here is going to office. So I write the process here, going to office. And then what is the potential failure mode? Potential failure mode can be, there can be many, uh, going late uh, or uh, not going at all, or uh, going to the office uh, in a condition where you're not able to work. So let us take one failure mode here. I'm, I'm taking an example of uh, one failure mode, going late. Now going late, what is the potential failure effect? So here it will be low productivity and how severe it is. So assuming that uh, you are uh, very productive, so I would say uh, eight, 10 means worst case, means very, very severe. And one means uh, it has no effect at all on the customer. Here the customer is your organization. Then potential causes, what are the causes of going late to the office. So we have written uh, traffic, delay in starting, vehicle breakdown, waking up late and no mood, okay? And traffic, uh, how often it occurs? Let's say in my case, it occurs uh, most of the time. So it is eight. A delay in starting, uh, well, it always, this is the case. Uh, always uh, I'm uh, delayed uh, in starting from my home. Vehicle breakdown, very rarely it is two. Uh, waking up late, um, mm -hmm, waking up late uh, nine. Most of the time I wake up late and no mood. Oh, I never have any mood to go to the office. Oh, so I'm so sorry. So sorry to say that. Okay, now let us look at the current controls. Current controls. What are the current controls uh, to, which takes care of the traffic? Uh, maybe I take an alternative route or I use a GPS, whatever. Uh, I have to write uh, that current control here. And if I am using a GPS and uh, if it's effective, 
then the detection rating will be one. So remember, if the control is very good, that means the rating will be one. And if the control is not so good, then the rating will be 10. So the worst case gets the highest rating in each of the cases, like you see severity, very bad for the organization, 10. Causes every time it is occurring, 10. And uh, if the control is very, very bad, that means the detection rating will be 10. So here, alternative route or GPS, how effective it is, maybe five. Delay in starting, what do I do for that? I keep the watch 10 minutes fast, okay. Does it work? No, it doesn't work. So it is seven. Then uh, vehicle breakdown, vehicle breakdown, what do I do? Oh, I have got annual maintenance for that. And it is really working, it's an effective control, so I'll put two. And waking up late, well, uh, I have an alarm clock. Does it really work? Yeah, alarm rings, but I keep sleeping. That means it's not an effective control, so it's eight. Then we have got uh, no mood, okay? What do I do for that? I think about the salary, I think about my boss. Okay, it really works sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't work, so it's five. Now what I do is I multiply the severity, occurrence and detection ratings to get the risk priority number, RPN. I will get the risk priority number that is RPN by multiplying severity, occurrence and detection rating. Now I will multiply the severity, occurrence and detection rating to get the RPN number, risk priority number. And uh, once I do that, I get the RPN. So I have multiplied the severity rating of eight here uh, with occurrence rating of eight and the detection rating of five to get RPN as 320. So I see that the highest RPNs, which I'm getting, I can do a Pareto on that. And uh, the highest uh, RPN, the 20% of the highest RPNs, which I'm getting, I will choose these RPNs to take an action. Now you can either put an effective control and reduce the detection rating, or you can act on the cause itself. The best way is to act on the cause and reduce the cause so that your occurrence rating is reduced. But of course, if it's very difficult or it's going to take a long time, you can always put an effective control and improve your detection rating and reduce the detection rating to less than three of two. So whichever action you are taking, you have to write here. So right now, the action recommended for a delay in starting is plan the morning effectively, plan the morning better. And then waking up late, maybe the solutions can be multiple alarm or ask the spouse to wake me up. Of course, you can do an FMEA on the problem which you are trying to solve. So this is how you can do an FMEA on any problem, on any process. So whichever process you want to improve, you can do an FMEA. It is very useful when you don't have any data, any data at all, just two hours spent on FMEA can give you some good results. Of course, FMEA should be done with the team, never it should be done alone. Try to get cross-functional teams so that they can give you more ideas. So happy doing an FMEA. Please let me know if you have any questions, I'll be happy to help you.